The United States wants to maintain and even expand its military presence in Africa, but it's not being completely open about its plans, or at least that's the allegation. The uh, revelations were made by intelligence company Pangea Risk. So let's find out what is the concern and what it means, of course, uh, from uh, for the continent. Robert Besseling from Pangea uh, Risk joining us. Pangea, hello, uh, Robert, hello from Pangea uh, speaking to us. Uh, Robert, so here's the problem. We have the U.S. military coming in. It's often shrouded in information along uh, boosting in the economy, environmental protection, specialized skills training, but you're going to tell us that's not exactly uh, what's going on here. Hello to you, Robert. Good morning, Gareth. Hi. Um, yeah, we, the U.S. military has about 27 operational bases across the whole African continent. Most of those are in your typical conflict zones, in the Horn of Africa, in the Sahel region and West Africa, um, where the main focus is counterterrorism. Um, the Trump administration had been talking about drawing down those military forces, uh, but the Biden administration seems to be, as far as we can uh, fathom from the initial Africa policy plans, willing to maintain 6,000 U.S. military personnel overtly on the African continent. Our concern now is that a number of African governments are allowing covert operations not fully under the framework of their legal or constitutional uh, regulations. For example, uh, in West Africa, the small archipelago of Cape Verde, not many people will have heard of it before, but it's a very strategic position just off the coast of West Africa, and it's a hub for narco trafficking, for drugs trafficking. And the U.S. military seems very keen to crack down on this, but currently it does not have the full framework in place to be able to do so constitutionally or legally in that particular country, in Cape Verde. So the issue, uh, Robert Besseling, you're telling me is that the U.S. wants to be involved on the African continent, but not necessarily to serve the African continent. I'm getting a sense here this is self-serving interests in a way to protect American interests uh, on the African continent. That, that's what I'm hearing here. Um, we hear a lot of rhetoric uh, about the um, soft power of the, U of, of the U.S. in Africa. Vaccine donations, trade and investment being reinvigorated, etc. But at the same time, the U.S. military is already present in Africa. It has been for many years. Um, and that is now being ramped up further uh, and is being extended in a number of African countries where we have not actually seen the, the right laws in place to allow U.S. military personnel to operate. The real interest here are indeed U.S. interests to yeah. try and crack down on drug trafficking, which funds terrorism operations in West Africa and the Sahel, for example. Tell me... Uh uh, Robert, just before I say goodbye to you, I've got about a minute left with you on this, Robert. Uh, what do we do about this? I'm not too sure. Like, it's a lot of information, and, and factually, uh, it seems to be making sense. What does Africa do? What do we do about this? Do we go along with this? Are we against this? Uh, how does this benefit Africa, I think, is what, I, uh, what I'm trying to leave you with as my final question. Gareth, I think what we need to do here is try and come down to the legal position of U.S. forces in Africa. Which countries are doing it legally and which ones aren't? And then we have supranational courts like ECOWAS in, in West Africa or SADC here in Southern Africa who are all able to oversee um, these, these status of forces agreements. In Cape Verde, the example I mentioned earlier, it is really important to try and see how Cape Verde is benefiting from the U.S. forces on the ground and what trade-offs are being made, not always publicized correctly, uh, between these uh, African governments and the U.S. military. That's a lot more going on here than is actually being publicized or reported. And in the last few seconds with you, SADC and the U.S. military, where do we stand? Um, there is very little U.S. military presence in the southern region. There is a unit in Botswana, uh, and at the moment it seems that more U.S. forces are being taken out of the southern region and being refocused on the ski hot zones in the east and the west of Africa, particularly around the, you know, Cape Verde, Niger, and the Sahel region. Uh, Mr. Robert Besseling from Pangea Risk, what a pleasure speaking to you. I'm sure you and I are going to speak many times uh, over the coming months as far as this uh, U.S. Uh, involvement in Africa is uh, concerned. We'll, of course, be watching the situation in Cape Verde as well. We'll put our team onto it. Also, what's happening uh, in Botswana and the rest of SADC.